Welcome to Sunday School. And this is uh, the anniversary of the funeral of Aleister Crowley. For those of you who celebrate such events, <laughs> just that footnote in history, 1947. Uh, uh, but anyway, I'm trying to clear up my, my screen here from all of this tips and things like that. This morning for Sunday School, we'll try to make it brief this morning uh, and have a word from uh, our dear friend, Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford, uh, concerning uh, the concept of initiation. And uh, in this particular context, he's talking about Kabbalistic uh, initiation which he has a, a three-degree initiatory society himself of self-initiation that's outlined in uh, Son of Chicken Kabbalah. And uh, you could put yourself through those degrees of initiation uh, uh, just by yourself with this book or uh, take part of one, one of my uh, online series of, of initiations or... Uh, uh, if the pandemic will ever allow us again, uh, a three-day weekend uh, hotel extravaganza, three-degree initiations of, of Zippy or our holy order, the rabbis, uh, the rabbis, uh, Kabbalistic and Initiatory Society. Uh, but anyway, the... I'm going to read just uh, the rabbi's words here uh, concerning the difference between Kabbalistic initiation and instruction. Indeed, this holds true for, for any uh, 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 field of study or any magical technique. There's a difference between studying magic and magically initiating oneself in a series of, of growth experiences or a series of awakenings. Uh, well, anyway, let's let the rabbi uh, uh, explain it. And this is from, again, oh, lost the page, from the son of Chicken Kabbalah. And uh, it's in my introductory words of the three degrees. And it starts off with an epigram from a letter from uh, a carbon copy of an undated letter to a local organizer. And this is from the rabbi. We don't know where he is, actually. although he has been spotted. I heard several birds say. But I digress. <laughs> but I digress. Okay, it's Sunday school. We want to go out and play. Dear friend and comrade, I hate organized clubs, cults, and anything that smacks of profit motivation, and hierarchical ego trips. If we're going to do this in your city, here's how it's got to be. Now he's writing this to a local organizer to organize one of these uh, three-day uh, marathon initiations into the three degrees of Kabbalistic magic. We exist as an initiatory entity only for the hours of the degree ceremonies themselves. There shall be no dues, no fees, no oaths of obedience, no loyalty oaths, no oaths of secrecy, no tests, no exams, no business meetings, no newsletters, no gossip, no BS. 
The officers for the initiation ceremonies are you, me, and a musician technician to play a few organ notes and run a simple slideshow. Be prepared to personally shoulder all financial responsibility. You may, however, graciously accept volunteer assistance in any form. I'll send you the scripts and material. You book my flights, the hotel, and make all the arrangements. Then, don't worry about it. See you in March. LMD. Okay. That was that epigram. Initiation is not instructions. Unquote. These blunt words were scrawled in the rabbi's unmistakably poor handwriting on the cover page of his own copy of the first degree initiation script. They should serve to remind us that Kabbalistic initiation is not the same thing as Kabbalistic study or Kabbalistic practice. This is an important fact to remember because Ben Clifford's initiatory program was designed not as a classroom course of instruction that reiterates seven centuries of corrupted manuscripts, but rather as a dramatic, interactive, experiential process designed to program fundamental modifications deep in the candidate's psyche. Changes that can only be made at deeper levels of consciousness than the cognizant instruments of reason and intelligence can reach. In a scathing letter, to the editor of Yad magazine in 1988. Ben Clifford wrote, God consciousness is the cosmic birthright of every monad of existence. It is not reserved only for those who have time to play all day with numbers and Bible verses so they can demonstrate how everything in the universe is probably really something else. We proclaim with smug confidence that the Hebrew alphabet with its three mother letters, seven double letters, and twelve simple letters is the formula and blueprint of being and existence itself. But are we so arrogant as to believe that anyone who cannot speak a certain language or learn a certain alphabet is barred from activating and accessing the universal formulae these letters symbolize? Hell no. I'm a chicken Kabbalist. Even if the Hebrew alphabet never existed, the number three would exist. Space time would still be a phenomenon of a three fold environment of up, down, right, left, front, back. The number seven would exist. There would still be an above and a below, an east and a west and a north and a south, all surrounding a central point. Light and sound would still fracture and organize in sevenfold primary spectrums of color and music. The number 12 would still exist. The six directions would still intersect at 12 oblique angles. Light and sound would continue to fracture and organize as 12-fold secondary spectrums of color and music. Even if we could not read or write or add or subtract numbers, the sacred alphabet would still be creating and holding existence together, still penetrating our souls as color vibrations that excite the cones and rods of our eyes, still be resonating in our ears as the ordered har harmonies 
of the music of the spheres. As cabalists, we must first swallow these primordial seeds and plant them deep in the center of the soul and let them germinate quietly inside us as we tinker with numbers and plot along with what we think are our cabalistic studies. Look, you can memorize and juggle and manipulate the numbers and Hebrew letters and words till kingdom come. You can dissect the scriptures till your beard reaches your knees. But if you haven't first inseminated yourself with the pure, innocent, fundamental code, your seeds will be defective and you will only succeed in making yourself pregnant with a cabalistic monster, an altogether unpleasant bore of an individual obsessed with your own infinite and irrelevant cabalistic revelations, connecting everything in the universe to everything else but yourself. Following the classic format of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, Ben Clifford's degree ceremonies follow the exploits of the awakening candidate as he or she unfolds from one level of consciousness to another. At each step, the candidate is met with resistance that, he is, that is overcome by a peculiar character-building adventure that involves surviving an ordeal specifically linked to the dynamics of that degree. Passing each degree's ordeal literally mutates the candidate's consciousness so that he or she becomes a new conscious entity, freshly equipped to perceive and function at the new level and capable of absorbing that levels new lessons and mysteries. Degree-specific secret words, gestures, grips, and other seemingly silly claptrap and signs of recognition are an important aspect to the initiation experience. During the course of the ceremony, they are repeatedly drilled into the candidate until they become as familiar as a song. There is a very good reason for this. The ceremonies are designed to trigger subsequent and more intimate initiatory dreams and visions in which the candidate must make use of the signs, grips, and words as tools to resolve more personal and perhaps more terrifying metaphoric challenges. It is clear by the notes that the, uh, oh, it says hotel temple initiation. It is clear that by the notes that the accompanied, that accompanied the scripts that most of the initiation weekends were held at hotel venues. The temple and waiting area being the private banquet room and adjacent conference room. Officers and candidates were lodged for the weekend at the same hotel and able to conveniently rest and refresh themselves during breaks. The first degree ceremony was ideally conferred upon three candidates per occasion. Uh, it focused on the mysteries of the dawn of consciousness and the birth of the three mother letters of the Hebrew alphabet. It was a lengthy ceremony, breaking late in the afternoon for a formal dinner and a rest period before continuing late into the evening. The second and third degree ceremonies were obviously designed to be conferred upon one candidate at a time, although there was notes that said that as many as 25, 26. The third degree ceremony was also lengthy and included a formal dinner and a rest period followed by a midnight meditation. Other third degree initiates living in the vicinity were invited to attend the dinner and meditation. And it appears that there was always an occasion for warm fellowship 
such as one might expect from any fraternal organization. As much as possible, I have reproduced the scripts of the three degree initiations, just as Dr. Ben Lamad and I found them. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lamad Ben, um, uh, or Gizmo Ben Lamad, okay, is the, the survivor of, it's a long story. You might already know it. I have tried to clearly delineate my editor's comments in the footnotes or other bracketed notes within the text. That's food for thought. Of course, I belong to organizations and, and fraternal organizations and the Masons and the OTO and other, and other things. And uh, the, uh, they're, they're all wonderful in their own way. The point the rabbi was trying to make here is that the true initiation, no matter what vessel you pour it into, is uniquely your own. It's your own awakening. And initiation is something that you unfold yourself to rather than something that's conferred upon you. Anyway, that's it. I got my temple coffee here. The living room is kind of nice and warm this uh, uh, this morning, although it is still filled with unpacked boxes and things like that. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend and that I'll see you bright and early tomorrow. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Sunday school dismissed.